Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Price Structure Show and the topic for the video is the Standard Deviation Channel, the SDC. An interesting concept, Standard Deviation itself is commonly used in statistics to analyze the dispersion of a set of data compared to the mean average of that data. When that concept is transferred into the world of trading and investing, instruments such as the Standard Deviation Channel come to life. The SDC, it's going to appear on top of your price chart and will remain completely stationary unless you tell it to do otherwise. It will have have a straight center trend line between two periods of your choosing no more and no less then it will have two parallel lines one on either side of that center line which are equidistant from the center line thus creating the channel that's the one that's about what it's going to look like we've skipped a chunk of that initial green candle run up on the left and measured out our sdc on the top where price is ranging with a small bit of a ramp up you can also see in the inputs that we've set the parallel outside lines as being one deviation in distance from the center line which is pretty tight in but even with only being one deviation away you can still see that most of the price action is within the channel the channel center trend line also known as the line of best fit is assembled using a form of statistical analysis known as the least squares method named as such because it minimizes the sum of the squares of the errors we're not going deep into the formula here but in the video description you can find more on the mathematics of how it all operates but there are a few settings that you can have a tweak about with for the standard deviation channel just to mention first that the date and time are included as inputs that's where the channel's endpoints are typically it's a lot easier to just drag the channel to where you want it to be but there is the manual box option there to type in the date and time if you so wish might be useful if you're going back a long way with the channel and you don't want to fear so you're dragging it on forever better to have that choice than not next up we've got two tick boxes in the settings which will say ray right and ray left respectively these merely extend the channel ad infinitum in the direction that you tick for so this is an example of ray right the actual channel points are only between these two rings so everything to the right of that is where the channel has extended to because of the rate right doesn't matter how far you keep scrolling that way it'll keep going and here's a mirrored example this time showing the ray left box is ticked want to go back as far back as the chart data goes ray left on the standard deviation channel will go there with you as your faithful companion never leaving your side another checkbox you might be offered is whether you want to fill the channel or not basically meaning to color it in as you can see here in our example you'll select a color of your choice and the standard deviation channel will be filled in with that color. You can still see the candles in a sort of x-ray style vision and it may need to invert the candle colors so as they don't completely clash with your fill color. But it is your time to shine if you've got a PhD in the digital arts. Coloring in on the charts can absolutely be a tremendous amount of fun. Now for the final and arguably most important setting of all, how many deviations are where you want the channel lines to be from the center line. Here's the SDC with a pretty narrow one deviation input. Most of the price action within the channel but there is a good chunk of it down the bottom which does repeatedly close outside of the channel likewise near the beginning and end of the channel plenty of periods are above that top line now this is the same channel but with two deviations a popular setting for the channel this changes things drastically as we see almost the entirety of the price action is now inside the channel apart from one low that reaches outside of it at the bottom middle there in the center barely gets outside of the channel and finally one with a real bit of width to it exactly three deviations punched in on this one all of the price action easily comfortably within the channel no question about it and any more than three deviations and your lines are really going to start getting out there you probably couldn't even fit them on your chart at that stage so not sure you'd be using them that far out for but who knows if you have got a strategy for profiteering by using 18 deviations on the sdc then go get those profits what are you waiting for likewise if you want the outer lines narrower than one deviation because you know that you've got a winning strategy for that the platform we're using will let us go as low as 0.1 deviations although really there isn't much of a gap at all between the lines at that stage the point that i'm trying to get across here is that most traders if they are using a standard deviation channel like this they are mostly using it with either one two or maybe three standard deviations for their strategy still though nothing wrong with throwing out conventional wisdom if you are wanting to be a pioneer of the trading world these are just a couple of examples that highlight the differences that can be made with the channel by changing a few of the settings let's jump it over to the signals that we could take from the sdc how can we get into trades from a consistent an interpretation of the channel. The typical way of using the SDC is as a method to look for potential reversals. The upper and lower channels can effectively work as dynamic support and resistance levels, leading many traders to use them in the same fashion. That means if price finds its way above the channel, that could indicate the potential for a decent sell trade as price has allegedly become overbought. Looking to see price get back towards the center line with that trade, then switch it around for if price gets below the channel, the suggestion is that price is oversold and therefore you might want to enter a 
buy trade to try and feast on some of that savory mean reversion. Here's a prime example where we wait patiently with our channel for price to close outside of it, which we do get up in the top right corner. Look at that, just in time for the big drop over the next couple periods, where we would of course take some excellent profits. Another example of this time price closing below the SDC, and no surprise that this rigged example does go to our favor. We'd be in a buy trade right at the bottom where we've circled price closes outside of the channel. This time a more modest win for us compared to the last example, but a win nonetheless. Never forget though that these signals are not the be all and end all. You don't need to have your direct entry signals coming out of the SDC. The channel could just be a filter or as the name suggests an indication merely utilized with other reversal tools or indicators. For example, you could combine it with a reversal indicator such as the relative strength index. Use the SDC as a filter and the RSI as your entry indicator for when price is overbought or oversold. Or look for a particular reversal candlestick shape such as a shooting star candle. If one of those appears outside your channel, it could be that you're in a trade based off of that. There's a million ways to trade, so pick one. However you want to play it, on balance, the SDC, it can be a useful tool in assessing the likelihood of a reversal in price. However, plenty of traders will take that logic and use it in the exact opposite way for finding trend trades instead of reversal trades. So if price closes above the channel, that could be seen as bullish for price because that's clearly the direction that price is already trending. Therefore, if you do see price above the channel, you might want to hop on that buy train or just the opposite, get your ticket for the sell trade train when price closes below the bottom of the channel. I mean, price being outside of the channel must surely indicate that a downward trend has been occurring. The fact that we can use any interpretation of the channel for any signal does re-emphasize the need to use multiple trading tools to try to increase your chance of getting winning trades and decrease your chances of getting losing trades. Using nothing but the SCC is not going to get you to where you want to be, assuming where you want to be is profitability. One more on the entry signals front, if you are desperate you can always use that center trend line to assess whether price has been going up or down across the length of the channel. You could jump in on a trade going the direction of the trend line or or take any of the signals from it which you could take from any typical moving average because why not at its core it is no different to a moving average so there we go plenty of options for assistance from the sdc on those trade entry signals any trade any time can be justified easy peasy entry signals be damned though you could instead just use the indicator as an exit indicator a helpful assistant for your money management if you were using other entry indicators to find trend trades then you could use the sdc to tell you when to exit those trades do that by treating those outside channel lines as your take profit. So if you're in a buy trade and price closes above the top channel line, you'd close down the trade on the assumption that the trend has become overbought. There is too much momentum in that moment, which will soon cease to be. Opposite story for a sell trade, when price closes below the bottom channel line, we could take that as a suggestion we are living in an oversold world, and so we should exit out of our short position. There's also no reason that any of the three lines couldn't operate as your stop loss too, depending on the strategy. That could apply for a trading stop loss too. As long as you're dragging forward the channel each period that passes or every other period that passes, you could update your stop loss with the movement of the channel. It is worth checking all the options just in case that can improve on your trading strategy. Away from those trade exit options and the SDC can still assist with money management by acting as a measuring tool for your risk. If for example you only want to risk 1% of your capital per deviation distance or per two deviations distance, the SDC allows you to keep a handle on maintaining a consistent level of risk or reward on your account. You just measure out on the chart how far in pips that deviation distance is and you can then incorporate that into your risk calculation. The aim here is to try and account for the amount of market volatility at the point of entering the trade. Anything to try and preserve capital. When we're in the markets as a tool that you draw onto the chart the SDC can be drawn on any chart, any asset, forex, stocks, metals, you know the asset classes and the subsets of those classes. I won't go through every single one but just assume if it's it's got prices on a chart, you can slap an SDC onto it. Also, if you don't have a trading platform, that is not an issue as long as you have access to the raw price data. That way, without inconvenience, you will very easily be able to hand draw your price chart and draw the SDC on top of that. Do bear that in mind as an essential skill. I have ended up in that situation more than a dozen times at least. Something else to think about with your SDC in the markets is where you actually begin the channel. Where does your pencil first touch the chart to draw from? Do you draw from from the start of the day, the week, the latest trading session, from the moment you sat down and pulled up the charts. There are plenty of options, but again, whichever one is best, that is going to come down to your personal strategy, and that is going to require testing.
testing in more specific circumstances. However, do be aware that certain candles will appear to be outside of the SDC when you draw the channel from a particular period, but will then appear to be inside of the SDC when the channel is drawn from a different period. You will likely want something consistent. If you are intraday trading, for example, you could always start the channel at the very beginning of the trading day and reset it with each new day. If you're on the daily time frame chart, you could always keep the channel one month back from the present day. Whatever you like, keeping it consistent will allow you to develop a stricter rules based system as opposed to just starting and ending the channel wherever you so feel and jumping into a near arbitrary trade with only but hope. In conclusion, the standard deviation channel can be a useful addition to your price chart and with a customizable width of the channel, the visual aspect of it shouldn't get too much in your way either. Very handy if all you're doing is just glancing at price without the idea of actually entering a trade. And it could be that nothing more than a simple visual for a general assessment of however much price action that you're wanting to look back at. In terms of the direct signals from the SDC, it sort of works for entering or exiting trend or reversal trades. It's versatile in that sense that it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways by a lot of different traders. And whilst that might seem like a beneficial tool, it does start to lean towards being a jack of all master of none type of situation. And that means you are likely to find other indicators or tools that give you greater precision for those direct signals. But it can also be a filter on those indicators that are giving you the direct signals, supporting those signals by either adding credibility to them or bringing doubt to them. Whether it's finding us winners or keeping us away from losers, we don't mind which, as long as it's adding value in some form. Because irregardless of how you're using it, it is not going to work fantastic in any way, shape or form if you are not using it in combination with other trading tools, concepts or indicators. That could be trading reversals with the RSI and reversal candlestick patterns, trading trends with one of the many, many trend indicators out there. But there has got to be something else at work alongside the channel. The SDC, it's a useful tool, but that doesn't make it some fantastical portal to a new world of trading. It's just aight. That's it for the SDC, but if you do see this as your magical gateway, then why not check out some of the information linked in the video description. And do consider how every single chart in this video has been specifically selected for showing you how price structure may or may not work. The SDC will of course appear perfect in the examples we show you, but you are not very likely to find those examples out on the chart. I can tell you it took a long time of scrolling and looking to get some decent examples like that. So don't expect to find them as soon as you step on the charts. But fortunately, we have traded the SDC in live forward testing to show you what it's really like. And those videos are also linked in the description. Thank you for watching or listening. This is Project Trade. I am Sigmund Freud's mother and there will be more.